All right, the young guns now. Um, we have um, Shreyas Gandhi and Arpit Mishra, who are the co-founders of YOLO Health. Shreyas did his graduation from PhD from IIT Mumbai before starting uh, YOLO Health. He has authored several research papers and has five US patents. He has been a consultant for Samsung R&D, and his interest lies in electronics, medical devices, algorithms, and community health. Arpit did his graduation in computer science from IIT Kharagpur and has worked at Nomura before joining Yolo Health. His interest lies in end-to-end -end technology development. Both Arpit and Shreyans handle the complete product development at Yolo Health. Welcome. Can we have the presentation? Okay, health ATMs. Now this product will make much more sense after listening to all the talks because this is a one-stop solution to a lot of questions which have been raised during various talks. Like we can implement Dr. Pramod's EMR system at the back end of it. Then we can implement Dr. Lalit's decision-making system which makes the health ATM intelligent. And then we can, at Dr. Swami's digital health area, we can deploy the ATMs. And then we can ask Khushbu's patients, chronic care patients to come over and get themselves periodically checked. <laughs> So uh, it's not just the health ATM that we are developing, the health ATM is the first product. Actually, we are trying to create a virtual healthcare network which will comprise of health ATMs. It will have health pods, which will be a portable version of the health ATM machine. Then it will have medicine dispensers, which will be connected to health ATMs and health pods, which will automatically dispense the uh, medicine when the doctor is consulting through live video conferencing. And also it will have a doctor video consultation app and a mobile app for users. Before we go further ahead, I would like to give you a look and feel of how the first version of the ATM looks like. And 15 of such machines have already been deployed across India now. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, let's have a look at the health ATM machine. Can we have uh, volume, please? Can we increase the volume? So uh, let me explain simultaneously. Using HD so, video conferencing. Uh, Starting from this height sensor on top, which measures height using ultrasonic proximity measurement. This is the HD camera for doctor consultation, followed by touch screen for UI interface. This is the fingerprint sensor for biometric authentication. Our health ATM also measures blood glucose, hemoglobin, hemocrit and lipid profile using these devices which you see here. This is the pulse oximeter which measures the pulse and oxygen saturation. This is the digital stethoscope which is used during doctor consultation. This is the dermoscope which is uh, used to take high resolution HD skin images. And this is the temperature sensor which takes instantaneous temperature. These are the ECG electrodes which are used for taking it well lead ECG. This is the slot where the report printout comes. And this is the wireless blood pressure meter. And finally, there you see is the weighing machine which measures fat percentage, muscle percentage, hydration and bone mass. User starts with a fingerprint authentication. If fingerprint is not found on database, user is given two options, new user and existing user. New user starts with a basic registration. User has to enter name, age, gender and mobile number. Mobile phone number is used for verification using OTP. User selects a test option. User stands below height sensor for height measurement. User is given audio instruction and screen animation to follow test procedure. The progress bar shows a progress of test. After the test is complete, user can move to next test. Soon after, user is asked to stand barefoot on weighing machine. This measures weight, fat percent, muscle percent, bone mass, hydration. The machine gives audio instructions also and there is an animation shown. After weight and body impedance, user is asked to put PP cuff on upper arm. User can also take help from the attendant to fasten the BP cuff.
PP reading takes a minute to complete. After BP, user is asked to insert finger into oximeter, which measures pulse rate and oxygen saturation. User is then asked to take out temperature sensor and place it on neck or inside ear to get the body temperature. It's supposed to be an attended machine. Here the user is doing it himself, but we are going to keep it attended. There's going to be an attendant to help the person. Report is generated instantly. User has option to print, email or SMS the report. All the machines are cloud-based and the data is stored on the cloud which can be accessed by the user later from a web interface or a mobile app. So as soon as the report is generated, all the data is pushed to the cloud and uh, doctor, if a uh, live doctor is available, they will be able to view the data uh, as soon as it is captured. As well as uh, during the doctor consultation, doctor will be able to uh, basically... User selects the, the skin checkup test yeah. from the list of menus. The dermoscope automatically switches on as soon as the test is selected. User can then pull out the dermoscope and place it at the affected area. Dermoscope can be cleaned using the available alcohol swabs. Along Assistant can help you take the focused snapshot of the affected area. This snapshot will be saved in the patient history and can be shared with a doctor if needed. Magnification up to 500x can be achieved from this dermoscope. Along with this, User can access his dermoscope image from the patient history option. Image can be printed from any health app and is also available at online patient interface and mobile app. User selects the option of consult doctor. A list of available specialities is displayed. User selects the required speciality and a list of online doctors are displayed. User selects the doctor to place a call. Doctor receives a notification to accept the call. When doctor accepts the call, user and doctor can see each other. Doctor can also view the patient's vitals on right side of screen. Doctor can switch on the stethoscope from the screen and ask the user to put stethoscope on chest to hear the heart sound. Doctor also has the option of changing output volume of stethoscope. So other than the stethoscope, both the dermoscope and the otoscope can also be used during the doctor consultation. Once doctor is talked to the patient, they can write a prescription from their interface. So as you can see, doctor is now writing a prescription uh, for the patient. When and doctor submits the prescription, patient can see the prescription in their interface. So in this case, doctor only suggested one medicine. Patient so can take a printout of this prescription or access it online or access from mobile app. And all After the, the consultation is over, yeah. doctor can end the consultation. Doctor will see a consultation summary and can generate an invoice. Prescription has complete details of doctor and contains a digital signature of doctor. It also contains a unique verification code, which can be verified by pharmacy using SMS. Okay. That's a pretty much an overview of the health ATM machine. So this was just the basic health check that we showed you. <laughs> it also has uh, advanced checkups like ECG. Blood test machines are also there. We, are, we give three types of blood test. That is blood hemoglobin, blood glucose, and complete lipid profile. And you get instant result within three minutes. Uh, so, uh, we all know that there is acute shortage of doctors in India. The doctor is to patient ratio is very bad. In fact, it's lower than what it is in Pakistan. So, uh, but we don't really get to realize the gravity of the problem. So before I got into this space, we all, we all have heard that there is lack of good medical facilities in the rural areas. But we never ourselves went and spent a couple of days or three days in a PHC and saw it how it was. When I was deploying the first healthy ATM machine in a village called Lakpur, that is around 50 kilometers uh, from Bangalore, I stayed in the village for around three or four days where the, I first realized that how bad the situation was. So while I was deploying, I was also accompanied by a couple of Narayana Hridayala doctors. And while we were deploying, uh, uh, patients came over and the, one of the doctors happened to be a native of that place. So they requested uh, to be consulted by the Narayana doctor. 
The Narayana health doctor then uh, picked up the BP meter that was there, the blood pressure machine. And to his surprise, the mercury was just dancing up and down. It, the my meter was not usable. Then he picked up the stethoscope there and the pipe was cut from beside. And we had a light-hearted talk that uh, it is really deplorable, the state of uh, medical facilities that you see in the rural areas. After some time, a lady came over and she had a child in her arms and the, and the child was wailing like anything. And uh, this clinic where we were deploying the health ATM, which was actually run by a BMS doctor. So she started talking to the BMS doctor there. And this BMS doctor had just a couple of words with the lady and started prescribing some medicine. And without actually trying to diagnose or examine the child, he just started giving the prescription. The doctor who was with me, the Nana doctor, was having a look at all this. And he literally went mad at that BMS doctor. And he was like, how could you, without examining the patient, write a prescription? So gradually, once I started deploying the ATMs, I realized what, how acute the problems are. Could we change the slide, please? Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. So this was the first location where we deployed our health ATM machine. And I realized a few problems that exist in the uh, health infrastructure that is there. Uh, no, it doesn't, no, it doesn't need, need an AC. Uh, can you go one slide black back, please? Actually, I think, this, uh, anyway. So what I realized was uh, what things are lacking in the infrastructure at first is the quality of infrastructure. So we do not have good doctors uh, available right now. Next is the diagnostic uh, infrastructure. They don't have proper uh, devices to actually examine the patient. And third is the accountability. So there is no medical history of the patient that is stored and which can be went back and reviewed at a later date in time and there's no accountability with the doctor. Along with that, this, uh, there is also a lack of trust uh, that we see. So I'll tell you one more instance. So after deploying the ATM at that place, uh, I took a feedback from a few villagers there and I was very happy to see how they accepted the machine and uh, what I felt was the form factor of the machine having an ATM format, it, uh, they told me that it's like a robot to them and they really will get cured by it. Somebody was like, I'll put my finger, it has a fingerprint sensor. They were like, I'll put my finger on it and I'll get cured. So they were having that psychological placebo effect on that, Ki, there's something high tech and it will cure me. And that was working very well for us. So we deployed the machine, I went back and it was running fine for a couple of months, uh, uh, for a couple of weeks. After a couple of weeks, a strange incident happened. Some hundred armed men with lattice and all, they came to the clinic and they were literally wanted to beat the doctor who was sitting there. So the case was a local goon had done a bad mouthing about the machine. He said that they are capturing your fingerprints, they are taking your mobile numbers, they are going to steal your bank information. They will withdraw money from your accounts. And they literally believe that it's going to happen and they came armed with lattice and all. So what we felt was it was very, very important that uh, these things are driven by someone local. So it, for it to be accepted, these clinics to be set up in rural areas, they need to be owned and driven and promoted by somebody local who is there. So then we started a new concept of creating a locally supported self-sustaining virtual care centers. And uh, there was a, there's a clinic where actually the health ATM is deployed and beside it is a Kirana shop. So the Kirana shop owner actually owns the space where the clinic is being run and he has a stake in running the health and uh, buying and running the health ATM machine. Now, in this, we deployed digital payments through Vodafone M-Pesa. Within a couple of months, we could uh, have uh, around 1,800 people registered on M-Pesa and the Vodafone could sell around 1,800 SIM cards. And the idea was that if you buy any groceries from the Kirana shop owner, he acted as a micro banker, and uh, he, the people could make payments from the non-smartphone, simple phones, through the M-Pesa account. So he could initiate a payment that you bought at 10 rupees of this, 30 rupees of this, and then he sends a, 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 a debit card transaction, and you get an SMS that you need to authorize this. You need to just dial a code uh, from a USSD code, and you get authorized, and the money is deducted. If you do such transaction to buy groceries, uh, you get some credits in your health wallet, and those credits can be used to uh, get tells done on the health ATM machine. So now this is promoting the sales of uh, the grocery uh, of the Kirana shop owner who is there. And he himself promotes the machine that you come to my shop, buy groceries, you'll get health credits and you'll be able to do the health checkup. And then since the local person is driving it, he will tell the benefits of the machine to all the people and they will actually believe it. We can't go there and we can't teach them all this. They will have most faith on what is being told to them locally. 
So this is the model that we are trying, trying to implement at a lot of places. This was the first clinic that we set up. And uh, along with this, it is mostly the virtual care health network which we are going to set up, not just the health ATMs. Shriyansh will now explain to you more about the health ATMs, but what we are trying to create is a complete network, uh, like health uh, ATMs and health pods and medicine dispensers also, uh, which can be utilized by institutional healthcare uh, institutions. Uh, we are not trying to be a healthcare institution ourselves. We just provide the technology to hospitals, to governments, and to other institutions who and help them connect the patients and doctors remotely and we only manage the technology. Shansh, over to you. Yes. You can tell about the various products that we have and we are going to have. Okay, so uh, you, you have listened to the problems which Arpit has uh, told you which are existing in the rural areas as well as you know the general problems which uh, all the other speakers have uh, told you about. So we have come up with a unique solution and the solution is basically a, a platform which integrates various medical devices which connects uh, doctors, patients and the devices together. And the center part of that platform is our health ATM uh, machine. So, which is a unique uh, screening kiosk which uh, has integrated medical devices which is staffed by a medical attendant. And the unique feature of... Uh, okay. uh, and the unique feature of uh, basically this health ATM is, uh, this is like a platform. Instead of just a standalone machine, it, this is like a platform. All the medical devices which are existing currently into the market, all the medical devices which are being developed, all those can be integrated with this uh, uh, platform. This uh, has the ability to basically uh, send all the remote diagnostics to the uh, cloud and doctors will be able to see the live vitals, doctor will be able to control the machine remotely and if required they can, uh, during the doctor consultation they can ask the person to have another checkup uh, just for confirmation and they will be able to trigger the devices from their end. So uh, this is basically a form factor which we were talking about, which is a more like an ATM kind of a structure. People are more used to using uh, such, uh, machines of uh, such form and shape. So it's uh, more or less accepted in uh, uh, rural as well as the urban scenarios. But uh, there are uh, places where uh, it's e either physically not possible to install a, a physical ATM or uh, economically not possible to install an ATM for a very small population. So we have another solution for that, which is called as a Yolo Health Pod. So this is almost like a portable kit with all the uh, features of the health ATM. And a health worker can basically uh, carry this uh, health pod to the remote areas. This can also be used for a, a home care kind of a solution. So people who are doing the home care, they can basically carry this health pod to the patient and do all the vital checkups. If required, immediate doctor consultation can be done. And uh, another feature of uh, uh, the health pod is basically it is... Uh, uh, not dependent on the external power source or the external internet. So if uh, uh, you don't have the power source in the rural areas, it has more than uh, 48 hours of uh, battery backup. So you can take all the vitals. If you don't have internet connection, still the machine will store all the vitals remotely and as soon as it gets connected to the internet, it will upload all the records online. Uh, so after uh, the health ATM and the you know, uh, health pod, so there is another uh, uh, gap which is there in the current scenario. So patient will be able to uh, do the uh, checkups, patient will be able to consult a doctor, but still when the patient gets the prescription, he has to travel to the dispensary to get the medications. So our third solution basically tries to uh, co uh, cover that problem. And we have come up with a smart medicine dispenser units. So these units can be directly uh, uh, communicating with the uh, health ATM or the health pod. And the unique advantage of uh, these medicine dispensers are those, these are like the Lego bricks, which can be stacked together to create uh, as much capacity as you want. So starting from just the 16 number of different uh, type of medicines, it can be scaled and uh, you just need to put uh, these units on top of each other to basically create the custom capacity. And as soon as the doctor writes the prescription, those the generic medicines will be identified and automatically dispensed from the um, medicine dispenser. Uh, now coming to the video consultation. So uh, in th uh, this, uh, this is a totally in-house developed video consultation on option. 
So this is a patient interface which you see. So they, are, they see a larger screen which the doctor is there. They see a smaller screen which the patient can see themselves. And the uh, one unique feature is basically a doctor will be able to see all the vitals without going uh, to any other screen. So in this screen itself on the right top you can see that uh, there are icons which uh, specify the various vitals and their values which the doctor can see it live. Doctor has access to all the patient's uh, previous health record. This is the current values. So if you are doing the doctor consultation just after the checkup, it will show the current values. If it's the last uh, checkup, you can see the, that there is a star mark measured on the date. So it will show the last vitals and it will show on which date uh, these vitals were measured. So doctor can make an informed uh, decision. Doctor can also access the health records of the person. So a person can even upload their previous reports which are done elsewhere and doctor will be able to view all of them. Doctor will be able to write a prescription from this as you have seen in the video. As well as doctor will be able to write the clinical notes uh, right in this platform. And uh, we are developing a system in which these notes can be automatically interpreted and uh, uh, plugged into the EMR systems. So uh, what kind of vital, vitals can be measured in the health ATM or the health pod? So as of now, there are more than 30 type, different type of checkups which can be done in the health ATM, which includes the general body checkup, cardiac checkup, respiratory and lung diseases, reproductive and child health, diabetes and kidney, infectious diseases. So it uh, creates a comprehensive list of tests which can be done at the health ATM, and we are in the process of integrating more number of tests and more number of uh, devices with the ATM. Okay. Uh, in this, uh, basically, uh, for the urban scenario, users also have a mobile app through which they can access all their health records. So it has uh, uh, basic features. You can book and uh, book a doctor's appointment and just walk into the ATM uh, to consult that particular doctor or the specialist. You can uh, uh, store all your health records online. Uh, whatever the other previous reports, including the X-ray uh, kind of reports, can be directly uh, uploaded into the system. And the third option is basically uh, access all your health history. So whatever the other checkups you have done before or whatever the reports you have uploaded, you can view all that health history. And uh, you can view all the health uh, trends uh, of your vitals. So if, uh, uh, for example, a particular uh, vital is not uh, uh, going okay or the BP is continuously increasing, you will be able to see the trend and take a decision accordingly. Another app uh, we have is for the... Uh, another app we have is uh, for the doctors. So uh, doctors uh, will be able to consult the patients right from their mobile app. So let's say if uh, there's a surgeon and he has 10 minutes time between the surgery, so he'll be able to see the patient or basically view the patient's data during uh, this interval. So doctor app is very simple. He just logs into the app one time process and there's a single button click through which he can make him, uh, himself online available or uh, non-available. And as soon as he makes himself available, his uh, 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 details are generated into the system and patient will be able to connect to that doctor through the video conferencing and doctor will be able to consult the patient uh, the same which happens on a web platform. And there's also option for the offline consultation. So in cases where patient have just gone through the test and they want the doctor's opinion on that test. For example, if a patient has gone through a 12 lead ECG and he just wants the doctor interpretation or the doctor's opinion on that particular test, so he can opt for the particular doctor and that information is forwarded to a doctor. So doctor in their free time can basically go through the reports to give their opinions and as soon as the doctor generates the opinion on the system, an SMS is generated which is sent to the patient and patient will be able to basically see the opinion in the SMS. They can log into their web platform and see the uh, uh, opinions or for the rural areas, they can walk into the ATM again and uh, basically get the reports along with the uh, recommendations from the doctor. That's all I think. Thank you. Any questions? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you.